Let's go! With the time machine On 66 WNBC This is a Hit Oldies original special The WNBC Time Machine Hit Oldies on TuneInRadio.net And the online radio box NBC 66 WNBC WNBC um, Do you all know each other first off? No. Oh, yeah. no. no. Well, let's start off at the top. Brett, you're right up there in the top left corner. Why don't you introduce yourself, what you do, and um, um, how long? All, you I see is, all I see is you. Oh, now, how long do we have? A, an hour? We have as long <laughs> for as what you I do. want. But, um, yeah. Well, I'm Brett, uh, known as Brett, the radio man on Hit Oldies. I, I'm Brett Provo. I work for Intercom Springfield, Massachusetts. We have uh, three, almost four stations now. Uh, AC country sports and a little AM and uh, we're about to flip to classic country. Actually, we're doing Westwood one classic country on our translator 98.1 in Springfield. We're about to flip it over to an intercom uh, classic country. So I'm doing all the imaging for it and we had to start from scratch. So <laughs> it's been busy doing that for the last few days and we'll be continuing to be busy with that for the last next couple of weeks. But Scott yeah, I've been in radio Shannon, for uh, what's that? Is Scott Shannon involved in any of this? Scott was actually, uh, his format, um, what's it called? Uh, was on true, uh, true yeah. oldies, true oldies, right? Now he was on our, our AM station uh, when we first moved to the basketball hall of fame, where our studios are now. Uh, but yeah, he, uh, Scott sent us a bunch of liners. <laughs> and he said at the end of it, I was being so yeah, no, no, but, but it's funny that you mentioned that. Cause at the very end of the tape, he says, lots of splicing you guys. <laughs> so, <laughs> But I've been radio for about 38 years and uh, enjoy it every minute of it. So. You're a child. Even now, even now. <laughs> yeah, I got in when Madonna was uh, just a kid. <laughs> <laughs> the original Madonna. <laughs> yeah, yeah, her. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget, you're the imaging voice of Hit All These, too. Yeah, I do a Station. lot of the, the voiceover stuff for you oh, and a bunch of other stations. So. Yeah. I was also on uh, Westwood One. Uh, we were owned by Cumulus before Intercom, and they own Westwood One. So I did the uh, hot AC format. Uh, they've, was changed on, like, the, uh, they've changed the name of the company to Cum U Less. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> Many years yeah, ago. They, <laughs> so they dumped this in a trade, basically. They traded us out for some Fort Wayne, Indiana stations. They said, hey, we'll give you Springfield if we can take three uh, Indiana stations. So anyway, we ended up on Intercom. But Westwood One was a good deal because uh, I was on 200 stations doing different breaks for every station. It was crazy for a while. About wow. four years I did that. Yeah. Wow. Thanks a lot. Cool. Bro. Matt, you're up next. The air check guy. Everybody knows me as the air check guy. <laughs> Jay knows me from the WNBC reunion in 2004 that took a year to put together. Remember that, Dale? Well, <laughs> Dale you know, didn't. I, I, I couldn't I couldn't make it to that one. Uh, no. And I, I apologize profusely to uh, Matt for a long time. I apologize profusely, That's but I, right. and I really right. wanted to make it. <laughs> um, Steve invited me back in May to hit all these. I did Radio Samantha online out of uh, England for God knows too many years until it wasn't fun anymore. When it became a chore, it's like, that's it, I'm done. Um, he invited me to hit oldies. And at that point, I had just gotten some new equipment because everything died at one time. <laughs> you name it, it died. My mixers, my computer. I was, I was actually off for almost two months, right, Steve? Something like that. It was horrible. I ended up getting a new computer. This is, this is you know, Computer Central. It was my little piano on board, all my everything you know my little quarter of the world and everything gets done right. and i came up with the idea and on hit oldies let's do new york's best rock so i kind of focus 70s up to about 83 when plj aor died and steve says to me don't growl i'm like steve that's my voice <laughs> that was a cumulus station as well <laughs> yeah, yeah well, well when they were abc cumulus was less you know, yeah. so I had Bob Maroney do some imaging for me. Um, I it's AOR music with more of a um, up tempo 
presentation. I don't play four songs in a row, do a break. I'll talk about between every song, but I'll do it in an AOR style. That's what I like. So this whole WNBC thing is definitely going to be interesting for me. Steve said, speed it up. <laughs> Whoop it up. <laughs> talk faster. Talk to Pat St. John. He did both formats very well. Yeah. And I'll try not to growl. But that's my voice. I growl you know, as I've gotten older. My voice has gotten raspier. Yeah. And 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 Pete Salant actually complimented me on that when I got onto Weeby. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Matt. Paul, we've neglected you this whole night. I'm sorry you popped in there, and I didn't mean to not acknowledge you. Uh, sorry, gotta go. <laughs> Inner oh. bells ringing. Got to see a ball out of the room. Just got done with cataract <laughs> surgery yesterday. Love you guys. Peace out. I'm just joking. What do you need? Oh, please tell us about yourself. Um, oh, geez. What is there to tell? Let's see. You sell um, ice cream. So. You know, Dale and I work by, work, work by the minute. Oh, yes, yes, yes. 22 Slim plus minute. years in the radio industry. And then I decided that I wanted to be an owner operator of an ice cream company. And here we are with Chili Willie's ice cream, 20 plus. You got a real job. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. The best That's part about cool. it somehow. Listen, yeah. listen. We'll make we'll make you the biggest banana split you want, Jay, with all the fixings. Milkshakes, <laughs> floats, you name it, man. We'll make it for you. Okay. Wow. There's only one catch. You got to get your ass to Gilmore's barbecue in order for us to get the ice cream truck over there. <laughs> now listen. Um Though, gentlemen, um, I've been running the Totally 70s radio network uh, since 2007, and I have the proof of the jingle package on CD in my drawer here. But um, if you if you need any help with getting Internet radio stations on places where you can really be heard, uh, just let me know when we're done with this conversation. Um, the other thing that I do want to tell you is being a native of New York all my life, um, I grew up around great radio stations like Obviously, WPLJ, WYNY, and of course, NBC, and pretty much everything that we do here at Totally 70s, there is a little piece of everything here. There's a piece of NBC here, and Dale Parsons knows that. There's a great big piece of WYNY here, and Pete Salant knows that. That's basically what we did. We took the ideas of so many great radio stations and combined them. And we're not an all 70s station for those who've never listened to us. We are post Beatles from about 67. And our cutoff is around 1985, 1986. We don't do anything in the 90s, although I've worked at stations that have. I just don't feel that we're ready to make the leap into that into that time frame right now. Um, uh, 90s music sucks anyway. I, you know, I'll be honest with you. I tolerated it. I did tolerate it when I worked for 98Q in Danbury for the many years that I did, because I was there from 1995 to 2000. And then I ended up over on WPDH in Poughkeepsie, which is up your alley is classic rock station. But um, no, really wasn't. I mean, I, as I said, I tolerated it. So so here we are together. So if there's anything you guys need from me, just let me know. OK, so you're wearing your. 66 W NBC t-shirt. It's, it's the only one I have. The only one that I have. Off. Yeah. This is the only one I have. The oh. record big. The uh, record wow. big. Yeah. yeah you know. Um, and, and the thing is, it doesn't fit because it's a small. There was, yeah, there was the red WNBC shirts that you sent during your show that I had at one time. They yeah, but bad. these are the, I think these were the first ones. They I were, think. I, yeah. Mm-hmm. Very cool. And, that, and and this design was ripped off of a WIBG album mm -hmm. uh, in 19, oh God, 68, something like that, 69. Very cool. Yeah, it is cool, yeah. And uh, no, the, the um, thing I want to tell you guys quick is these, these are just reproductions. You can get these tomorrow if you want to. They're around. You can get them. Cool. In other colors, no. too. See, the thing is, is I grew into this. That's that, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the very can, sad thing, you know. That's <laughs> that's do reproductions and get the time machines reprinted too. Nice. You know, it, that's an easy thing. Easy thing. So sure. Yeah. Well, all right, Paul. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, thanks, Paul. Bye. Sure. I, thanks. I will get yeah. in touch. I will be in touch with you, Paul. Sounds good. Okay. All righty, Bob. Mister yes, Barbecue. So so I know everyone here except for, uh, I mean, I haven't met John yet, uh, but we, we kind of know each other from chatting back and forth. And, and I don't know Big J, 
although I, I know him, but he doesn't know who I am, I don't think. And, uh, and also Sorry, um, Dale, too. So uh, glad to see you guys and, and glad to meet everyone. Uh, it's quite a pleasure. Paul had indicated uh, Gilmore's Barbecue. One thing you guys probably don't know that every th third year, I have a huge radio barbecue here. It gets uh, uh, very interesting. There's about 100 people in the industry that come to this uh, uh, barbecue. And uh, we usually Even end up- famous, famous. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's here. <laughs> Joe McCoy comes. Um, yeah. Although I didn't see Joe in the last one. We were supposed to have one last year and we couldn't because of the COVID uh, problem. So hopefully this year, I think where, that- uh, where, is, where, where is this? Uh, it's at my house and I'm in Shelton, Connecticut. I'm not, where are you, Jay? I'm in the Pine Barrens in a secret location in a hut in New Jersey. <laughs> okay. So you're, 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 it's doable. <laughs> I have one light bulb. That's it. That's all I have. <laughs> um, I have two studios at the house. Uh, they're, they're messy right now because I'm doing more construction and things. Um, so my, my history, uh, I'm, I was a broadcast engineer. I'm retired from broadcast engineering from ABC in Manhattan and also ESPN in Bristol. Uh, did radio for many years from uh, I, somewhere around 1976 through uh, uh, 2008 at Weeby 108. I, I did uh, 14 years there. I'm, I'm, I'll be 61 in May, just to give you a sense for how old I am. Um, and now I'm uh, back into the aerospace uh, quality engineering uh, industry, which is what I did before broadcasting. Um, and I'm an outside contractor for that. But I also build uh, radio studio furniture and I'm, I'm in the midst of building three rooms of radio stu studio furniture now in the basement um, for a New Jersey station. So, uh, so I got anybody my I know, anybody I uh, know. No, no, Dave Plotkin, do you know Dave Plotkin? I know the name. I can't place the company. He, he works for, well, he works for uh, WCBS. Um, Intercom, New York. Um, yeah, Intercom, 1010 Winds. He's a production and engineer down there. So uh, so he does a little of both, but he does outside contract engineering for New Jersey. It's just a college station. Um, so, uh, but it, but it's a, it's a good project for me. It's three rooms. And then I got a, a call from John Harper uh, who I built his studios in Stanford and someone saw his next thing you know, I got to have a chat with, with someone for WNLK to build their studios now. So it's like, Oh boy, I'm <laughs> my hands full. So, um, well, but I still do, guy. I still, I still do radio and I have my downstairs studio and I have my, uh, my, I'm up in the third floor, um, of my attic, my attic studio, which is the original one. And, uh, and I, and I do a uh, uh, retro playlist, which is a, a show based on uh, oldies. Um, and I've been kind of sweeping uh, from 65 to 85, uh, pulling a chart. Uh, this week, it's going to be um, March of 1979. I just grabbed the top 100 chart for an hour and pick out the best songs uh, that you heard on the radio back then and play them all. So it's a lot of fun. I'll get up to 85 and I'll go back to 65 and start over again. Or I'll, I'll do a rotation of, uh, of songs just to mix it up, just maybe in between or something. So um, I, have a, and I, have a, I have a question before we go any beyond this. Um, is this whole thing being being taped so yes. it can be it can be available for everybody to watch? Sure is. OK, because that, I mean, I have a feeling that uh, I know when when Joey Reynolds, myself and Dale did one together. We had what two thousand hits. Uh, yeah, yeah, I watched that one. That was great. Oh, that yeah. was, was a lot of fun. That, that was great. I, I want to told these guys about it. Actually, I said, "You guys are gonna watch this." It was good. Yeah. Well, Joey, Joey is still a master interviewer. I mean, he just lovely. is. I, I why he is not on WABC or WOR right now is beyond my intellect. Just beyond it. Now he did um, have a show on Sunday nights on ABC, correct? Well, Put that one away. Well, I was on it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I know. Yeah. 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 And you guys were in Los um, Angeles as well. Yes, we were in KBC. Yeah. yeah. What happened with that whole thing? The contract? Uh, the funding. You know, it was, yeah. a, it was gotcha. a brokered yeah. show. It was a brokered show. It was the only way we could get in there. Right. And, right. you know, right. that's when cumul less was, uh, <laughs> yeah. was money less, you know, yeah. and uh, 
you know, they were having major issues. So they were. The they last were check, they still were. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, they're selling. They're selling land. <laughs> you know, they are. Right now, they're in the real estate business now. They are. You know, it's, it's unbelievable. And there's so many stations yeah. that have no content on them. It's too bad that we actually just can't can't provide programming uh to them you no know, that's that's something joey and i talk about that every single day that the and, and he has this philosophy and i'm, I'm not going to try to quote him but he thinks that we should go back to the seven seven and seven rule back in the day when you could own seven a.m seven fm seven tv yeah. that's it next let's move on because yeah. nobody dale and you know this People are not doing local radio the way it should yeah. be now. They're just they're not be. doing it. And yeah, COVID screwed everything up. Nobody will, will you know, nobody will, will counter that. But at the same time, there's this lack of local feeling. Exactly. Even if you, even if you have people that don't know how to pronounce Pashyunk in Philadelphia, yeah. you know, who are on the air there. And it's, it's like, what? Are oh, you yeah. kidding yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's just it's a waste just of transmitter uh, power. It, it really is a shame. And and, well, I, you know, and I'm like and I'm like Matt. By the way, I have um, probably 10, 20,000 unscoped air checks. I have I have several of you actually. So I've got it. I mean, I have. You can't imagine what's up in this room. You can't even see what's over there. But I have so much. I probably have over a hundred unscoped air checks to WNBC at least oh, wow. so and, and some of them are in am stereo i recorded them myself on my little really? sony wow. sfra <laughs> 100 um and i gotta look through the list and find out all i'm looking for all the time machine ones so that i can upload all of these um perhaps in another week or so uh, or less i should say so that that uh we can use them on the show um when there's dead dead air if you want to call it that steve knows you know and uh, and or everyone can get a copy of them, of you know, like yourself. But I, and it's high quality stuff. It's super. Oh, high, you know, wow. it's, it's it's like the masters or Paul DeMarco gave me um, a, a few of them as well. So there's a bunch um, Gary Blau recorded and I've got a few in here that I uh, just put together for the show. So wow. yeah, it's amazing. Hey, Dale. Quality. Hey, Dale. Yeah. Do, do, do you see what you created 33 <laughs> something years ago, 33 and a half years ago, do you see that it's still being not only talked about today, reviewed today, and now being played for a mass audience. It's Again. your fault. It's your fault. It is. And and I I couldn't be more proud to have been the first one that you did this with. I, you know, and I've said that to you privately, I'm going to say it to you publicly now, you helped change my, my entire career at a time when it needed to take a real quick left turn. And uh, you hired me at NBC to be Joey's controller, if you will. <laughs> And, um, you know, when, when Joey's contract wasn't renewed, I still was under contract and you put this thing together at first, we, we didn't have all the jingles. It was just 66 WNBC and I was playing oldies. And then all of a sudden, magically, these resung jingles showed up one day and I was in radio Nirvana. It was the wet dream that I had had since I was 10. <laughs> and, and no, I'm not kidding. I'm, I'm just not kidding. And I'm as big a radio geek as you all are. And uh, we all are. We have to be to be able to, to talk like this. But, I, you know, I, I, there, there are times when I will have dreams and, I, and I'm hearing the, I'm, the jingles are playing. And that is is it's, it's almost a little twisted, but that's, um, that's how much of an impact it had on me. And here we are all these years later. Now I've done a lot since then, obviously with different formats, helping to invent New Jersey 101.5, um, you know, sort of hip talk on, on FM radio. Um, and, you know, I've done a lot of things since then with Joey Reynolds, I've done radio still, uh, you know, and, I've been doing this for 50 years. I know, Dale, how long have you been on the radio? You, you've been doing it a long uh, 
1966. Okay. Yeah. And you were 12 then, right? Well, I, I worked. I was working for the station where four years earlier, Wolfman Jack got his start in oh, Newport News, wow. Virginia. No kidding. Wow. wow. World's greatest That's pretty cool. Yes. Dale, where, yes. where are you located, Dale? I am in Maui, Hawaii, in Hana. Oh, okay. Oh, there. well, there's the shirt. Okay. So you're quite a ways away. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I've been here uh, in Hawaii for, well, this, this month is 30 years. Uh, left uh, uh, Light FM, I was programming that, and uh, bought a station out here, and it was a complete nightmare. Um, if you ever want to make um, a small fortune in radio in Hawaii, start with a big fortune. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was a mess. Uh, but um, but I, I got out of that somehow um, and did some consulting. Uh, consulted a, a group that had uh, 16 stations here in Hawaii, uh, four or five on each island, and did that for a few years. And and now I have a bed and breakfast. My wife and I, Jenny and I, do a bed and breakfast here in oh, Hana, nice. uh, which which was very nice until COVID hit, and uh, we had six months with nobody coming into town. Uh, so. And, and I had, over the years, I'd, I'd grown accustomed to eating. So that was kind of tough. <laughs> but now everything's turning around. I, I do a lot of voiceover work. I've, I've done that for uh, uh, forever. And uh, before Light FM, it was NBC. And before that, I was down in uh, Norfolk, Virginia uh, at uh, WTAR, WLTY, and WGH, World's Greatest Harbor. Um, in fact, uh, Pete Salance now down in, Virgi in the Virginia Beach area. He lives yeah, down. Wow, there. He is. Yeah, yeah. He's licensed doing. Uh, so he's a social. Yeah, social worker. worker. Yeah, he's doing got great. His, he got his master's in that. Yeah. Yeah. I think I have an, an unscoped yeah. air check to WGH back in I, I think it's 1982. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know who worked there in. I don't know who's on it. 71. I, I was working at the time for WTVR in Richmond. And we did a remote from Virginia Beach for a week. And it was probably the worst remote I've ever done in my life because we did it on the beach. I, I mean, on the beach with the little remote board in the sand and a beach umbrella and the wind. And we had cart machines and turntables and the wind was blowing the sand in and into it. It was awful. Oh, wow. No. Oh, my and goodness. Wow. <laughs> on the last day, I was sitting there and, and I saw somebody standing in front of me son was behind him. I, I, he said, are you Dale Parsons? I said, yeah. He said, I'm Lee Fowler. I, I'm program director at WGH. I said, hey, how you doing? He said, how would you like to come work for us? Well, after a week in the sand, I said, yeah, sure. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we talked and uh, about three weeks later, I was there. I was doing, uh, he hired me for 10, a, 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. at night. Back when they had three hour shifts on the air. And that was great. And That's I because you talk between you, you said something between every song practically. Well, then. no, no. At, 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 well, you know, we we did some segues, but um, but you did a lot more talking. Yes, uh, but uh, three hours, you know, was was not a bad shift. Yeah, I wish the time machine had been three hours, six hours, even not on. <laughs> uh, yeah, from, from there I went to uh, WTAR and then on to NBC, uh, where I was program director for a few years after. After Kevin Matheny, he had gone yes, on yeah. to uh, MTV. Yeah, and and you know you're you're of course uh, immortalized uh, in a certain person's movie that was uh, in, and book that was uh, no, popular. No, not me, not me. Oh, that you're was not, Matheny. You're that not was in there at all. You are no, not in that no, at all. He liked Dale. He liked Dale. Yeah, that that's exact. That's he exactly what he said. He said he uh, like the you. reason Dale's not in this mm -hmm. movie is because I liked him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you. Wow. Okay. Thank you for, for clarifying that. I, I knew you were not pig vomit, and I knew you weren't uh, all the other stuff. But yeah, <laughs> well, I I I I, <laughs> I haven't. It is an excellent movie. movie. I I enjoy that. Mo well, I probably enjoy it because I wasn't in it. But uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know why? Because we've all got a face for radio. <laughs> yeah. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Listen to me. I was a cute kid in my day. All the girls said I looked like Chachi from Happy Days. Now I look like an ugly version of Fonzie. I don't know what the hell happened. <laughs> Sorry. Hey. 
Hey, <laughs> that's good. Oh, boy. Now let's keep this train on track here. Uh, John Patty Seville. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Yeah. You know. Just, just want to say, uh, it's been a bit. I'm, I'm almost afraid to mention iHeartRadio here, you know. But um, I'm over at iHeartRadio. I work at multiple radio stations in the Hartford market and around New England, and I'm the only original member from Country 92.5 in Hartford that's still there. Now, when we made the flip back in 1988, I was a music director, assistant PD, still there doing multiple shifts, uh, mainly on the weekends and working at the River 105.9 and fill-ins during the week. Kiss 95.7, I'm still there doing Top 40 radio at the same time as well. So I figure after 40 years in the radio biz, got my start at uh, 13 Waves and KC 101 back in 1979-1980. Then I worked over at WPLR doing album rock when we actually picked our own music. It was a <laughs> oh my God. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, it was great. I mean, we had a card file type thing, but I remember when we had all the albums lined up and you would just initial and date and whatever cut you played so the next DJ wouldn't play it. And we were all hired to be artists back then. We all knew the format. We knew the confines of what we could do, but they let us loose. And we had a whole bunch of fun. And back then, when we were doing the album rock, I was doing that back in the early 80s. We were dipping back into the late 50s. And we were playing Chuck Berry and Elvis and Buddy Holly and Jerry Lee Lewis and mixing in with the Stray Cats, you know, and Billy Idol and NXS and Bon Jovi. It was so much fun. You know, one of the best formats ever. And then I moved on to uh, DRC up in Hartford. I did the morning show there for a few years. I, I actually worked with Curtis, you know, over at, uh, you know, KC 101. He hired me over at Weeby 108. But that was the same day I got hired at DRC FM. So I took the morning gig there. And then, of course, moved on to Y107, did Y&Y &Y in New York. Worked with Larry Kenny and uh, worked with Jim Kerr and Dandy Dan. To work with guys like that, legends, I mean, I felt like, what, what am I doing here? I work with some of the best people in the business. So I learned a lot while I was down there in New York and uh, loving what I'm doing now. I mean, I'm treated really well. I got to be honest, over at iHeart, they're really, um, they've been good to me. They're letting me do real radio guys. Um, they're not telling me what to do. I can actually have content, talk local, 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 because I know we have an issue with some of the stations not being local enough. But I'm able to go there and do my own thing. Obviously, the music is all pretty tightly formatted. But I feel grateful and blessed to still be in the business after all these years. And when people ask me on the street, John, is the, is the music or the business better or worse than it used to be? I'll say it's different because, you know, I'm not going to complain about it because people are going to say, if you don't like it, then get out. Right. But I've also been smart enough to be an entrepreneur all my life. My wife and I are regional directors for the largest online wellness shopping club in North America. You know, fitness has been a major passion of mine. I competed in three shows over the past uh, several years, 2016, 17, and 18. I'm the New England Natural Bodybuilding Champion. Uh, it's the strictest tested show in the entire country. Blood test, urine test, polygraph. So I'm really into, you know, natural bodybuilding. I was a head trainer at several different gyms. And I have a DJ business, you know, with five guys in the company. We're getting ready to crank out some uh, weddings starting in mid-April when things open up. So I learned a long time ago because a guy named Mike McCann, um, who hired me at WABC and KC 101 back in 79, 80, said, whatever you do, John, make sure you have multiple streams of income. So I went out and bought a sound system, did my first DJ gig, 2,000 weddings later, one of the best moves I ever made because when I've lost jobs in radio guys, I've always had multiple streams of income. You know, so um, it's been a blessing. So I just feel... You know, bless when Steve asked me to be a part of Hit Oldies and be a part of this fantastic group because I'm listening to all you guys and I'm thinking, how did I get here? Because you guys have some amazing stories and you're all just really a, a lot of fun to listen to. I'm learning a lot and I feel honored to be a part of this group. So so thank you so much for uh, including me. Why don't you put the cat on? <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> Here's my yeah, name. I know. Uh, what a doll. What's the cat's yeah. name? Cat is Cal. Cal. You work at the river right now, as of now? Yeah, I'm working over at the river 105.9, the old HCN. Gotcha. Yeah, I know about HCN. I'm, uh, I live in Wappingers Falls. My mother has a house there. Right. And um, we, it's my house, but I, you know, I rent it out to my brother-in-law. Right. Um, your river radio station, we listen to it over at my mother's in Wappingers Falls. Wow. On a regular basis. We get that, and we get uh, DRC-FM, which I think is called The Whale. Yeah, DRC does a great job. I mean, they've, they've been doing very well. 
we get both your stations very good. If you um, if you friend me on Facebook one day, what I'll do when I'm over there on the phone, yeah, I'll give you a little audio clip on my phone and I'll show you the signal that you guys put out over there where I live in Wappingers. I right. think you'll be shocked at how good that station gets out over there. Yeah, I mean the river does very very well. I mean the, the country, the river, they, they're they're top three in the marketplace consistently. Yeah, ninety two five. We do get that. I haven't paid attention to it in years, but um, one of the guys that you used to work with worked with me over at ninety eight Q, Jack Becker. Oh, Jack Becker. Yeah, great talent. He worked great with set us of in pipes. Early days. Great set yeah, of pipes great. on him. Yep. In the early days of YZ, he was there and uh, just mm -hmm. a really good guy and enjoyed working with him. So I yeah. mean, just so many amazing people in this business uh, that, that we've met. I've been very, very grateful and so yes. grateful for being in the game, working in multiple stations after all these years. Yeah. We Don, when you were at YZ in the early days, did you work with Jack Craddaville at all? Jack Craddaville, another great talent. Uh, yeah. He, really he hired me at MAS originally in 87 and yeah. he's now of course at light in New York, but yeah, he hired me originally. Yeah, okay. I was hired early in the early days of YZ by a guy named Walt Pinto. Oh yeah. I know. Walt, Walt Pinto and Bob Piva. Oh, Bob yeah. Piva. Oh my oh, God. There's, oh, a, there's a name. Bob Piva. That's way back. Yeah. And then they had a guy in the afternoon, Ken Griffin. Sure, I remember Ken. Yeah, Ken yeah. Griffin was from DRC years ago. And Brett, remind this gentleman that the next time we do brunch up at Scooters, I'd like to meet up with him in person. Oh, yeah, by the airport, yeah. Yeah, yeah let him know about that, okay? Yeah. Definitely. But, uh, but Ken Griffin, when I worked with the guy, I'll tell you something. He was one of the nicest guys. He was very complimentary, kind of took me under his wing and mentored me uh, as a new DJ coming up. But I have nothing but good things to say about him. So really met so many great people in this business who have been very, very unselfish with sharing their wisdom and their talents, you know, and it's, I think that's, that's our job in, the, in being what, where we are now guys, to pour in the young people yeah. and, uh, and mentor them and leave a legacy. You know, that's, as, a, as I get older, I want to be more and more of a legacy builder. With that's people. something, that's a very interesting thing you just brought up. Yeah, Big J, I, I think that's so important. I don't know that we as an industry now have a great double A team ready to move up a couple of notches you know like like it used to be maybe right. that's because of attrition maybe that's because of budgetary issues yeah. i'm not sure and the, and the 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 and again i'm i'm not trying to bust i hate radio or cumulus or and, you know, enter off uh, you know <laughs> I, which is are all you know the, the jokes that i use once in a while um and uh, i i just i'm really concerned that if we lose that entertainer uh, part of what we do and mm -hmm. being the local celebrity, the yeah. local celebrity, um, I, I think, and again, I, I may be thinking too old in my, in my thinking, I, but I don't think so. I think people do want to connect. I think people do want to have someone who's talking to them, about them, with them. And Jay, I, could, um, I agree I with you. Not, 100%. I could not agree with you more, Jay. And I think that's so important, especially during COVID, where we became more and more forefront. We became a friend. And the whole thing is now with COVID, people are now looking inward. They're looking back. And that's why a lot of these young people, especially, they're getting into the music that we grew up with. They're watching yeah, old yeah. TV shows. When I meet with couples from my wedding receptions all the time in their 20s, I say, what kind of music are you into? They're into the music that we're playing on hit oldies. I mean, it seems like the 80s is that kind of blending point between their parents and them. They want to hear Journey, Bon Jovi, Def Leppard, ACDC, Guns N' Roses, the Go-Go's, George Michael. They want to hear that stuff mixed in. And that's the commonality. And um, I, I think, you know, they're, they're, a lot of them are old school. They're looking toward more of that personal approach, Big J. So I think there's something there. But I know when I go on the radio, my goal is to connect with people every time I open up the mic. And before I go on the mic, I say to myself, if this has got to pass to who gives a shit type thing. This yes. has got to matter to people. I'm not going to speak for the sake of speaking. A liner mm -hmm. is cool, but a liner is not connect connect with people. But when I yeah. talk about my bride at home, I talk about a TV show I liked. I talked about maybe a, a dish we had at home or talk about an artist and not just, man, that's a great song. But yeah. why is it a great song? Why, what, why is that song great? And explain it and connect with the audience so they go, He's like one of us. He really loves the music. Well, if anybody knows about personality radio, I think Dale Parsons there is probably the best person to talk to right now. 
And I think we should focus on that a little bit. Do you mind, Dale? I mean, Amen. I'm not trying to listen. I'm not trying to run this thing. I'm really not. Uh, but but I'm. Oh, I'm yes, you are. Right? No, no, this is taking on a life. <laughs> All right. I absolutely. Dale, I'd love threat. to hear your thoughts on that. I'm, I'm taking yeah, notes. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Dale, I'm taking notes, Dale. Yeah. Well, you know, that, that's just bottom line thinking. Uh, radio is all about the personality. Radio is all about uh, the, uh, the, the personal interaction with your audience. Um, there was a time when uh, the radio people, the people on the air seemed to be bigger than life. Mm. And I can remember even working for some people who didn't want you to be seen outside of the radio station as, as being the person on the air because they didn't want to, to screw up the mystique of what people uh, think you might be. Um, and uh, then I had other stations where we did remotes constantly and you were always out uh, talking to people. Uh, but, you know, I don't know that, I, I think in the larger markets, it seems to have gotten away from the, uh, the listener interaction, the, 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 personal, the personal attitudes, the personal feeling. When you get into the medium and smaller markets, there's still a lot of that going on. Oh, yeah. Uh, you, you, you see it, you, you hear it all the time on, uh, on a lot of the stations. Um, now, they may not be doing it 24 hours a day, but you'll get it in mornings, you'll get it in middays, you'll get it in the afternoons. Uh, nighttime and, uh, and overnights, they, they, you know, a lot of the stations uh, seem to, to let that um, uh, run on autopilot. Uh, but even then, I still find stations out there that, that's, that still have a certain uh, stationality, where regardless of what time of the day, you, you, know, you, you know what that station is. You, you know what you're going to hear. Uh, you, you feel like uh, you're, you're listening to a friend. And, and that's probably the biggest thing is, is being a friend to people. And, and, and uh, you were exactly right about uh, how important this was, has been during COVID. Because people wanted that friend. People wanted that, that interaction. They wanted that personal feeling uh, with someone. And yet, Some they're doing it very well. And yet, the cum is down. Uh, well, that, that's, that's just, we, yeah, that, that's not, that doesn't really bother me all that much from the standpoint of now there are so many places to go. Yeah. Um, you know, it's spread around so much. You know, it's not just that you listen on your radio. I mean, I, I, when I get in my car, I put things on, you know, I put my iPhone in there and I, I listen to, to stuff all around the world, uh, which I couldn't do before. Right. And Certainly. there are also very few stations here in Hana. You know, we, we, there are 900 people here. So we have a public radio translator and, and uh, uh, also one of the other, other public radio stations has a booster. So. That's you want to do it. a pirate station in your backyard. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, but, but who am I going to send? I'm going to be playing it to the fishes, you know. <laughs> well, somebody's got to hear it, you know. Please. There you go. Uh, but, you know, there are programmers out there. There are people on the air. And, and, and you mentioned, uh, Jay, about uh, the, the farm team. Uh, there's a great group of uh, players that aren't on traditional radio. Yeah. You know, they're doing pod podcasts. Podcast. They're doing, um, exactly. they're doing their own thing on the radio and uh, th they are, they are learning a lot of the basics. Uh, you know, I, I, who was I talking to? Um, uh, oh, John Wolford from jam. Right. A lot of his, uh, a lot of his jingles now go to uh, internet radio stations. You know, he's doing a lot of work for that, you know, and, and uh, that's really sort of, uh, uh, sort of gotten him gotten him along in the last couple of years because a lot of stations aren't buying jingles. Yeah, I bought some from him myself because I'm going to be starting my own little stream. And uh, you know, it, I, I, I bought I, one for my uh, for my bed and breakfast. Isn't that something? <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yes, Paul. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Series wow. twenty seven, the surf jingle. <laughs> <laughs> Using the WABC uh, logo, it goes something like back to Heavenly Hana Paradise dot com. <laughs> <laughs> and mine is going to be Big J's Music Radio forty five RPM. It's, it's going to be a WLS jingle 
from from like the late 70s you know music radio wls you know and i just made it the wabc logo and uh and I when are you launching it. jay huh when are you launching your your I, you know i've been working on this thing for three months now and and i'm i'm at the point now where i've seen so many titles and, and i've got so many libraries it's all going to be waved i'm not doing any mp3 it's all wave yeah. and i'm going to make yeah. this as good as it can sound with the technology that, you know, I, I can afford. Um, and I, I probably won't be live, you know, it'll be all sweepers and, and just that sort of thing, sure. but I'm going to it, sort of what I'm trying to do is what you guys are doing, except be a little more, a little, not as broad because I think if focused. it's too broad, then, you're going to be on the lower you, end of, of what yeah. Yeah, it'll be it'll be the lower end. It'll be a handful of fifties, and I'm talking, you know, the the, the usual suspects, um, sure. mostly from sixty three to eighty three. That's where my focus is going to be. Um, I will play later eighties cuts, but you know, the the primary categories that I will will have uh, will be tightly, you know, listed. Sure. Uh, yeah. Because there are songs you need to play. I mean, if you're going to attract a mass audience, you have to play hits. Um, but I'm also going to throw in an emotion by obsession. Yeah. Uh, obsession by an emotion. You know, I'm going to throw those in. Uh, you know, Only Time Will Tell by Asia. Who mm. plays those? Yeah. You really Prince have to throw those. We, I call it the oh wow category. I'm sure you've heard that term yeah. before. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I do that on mine as well. You throw in one that, you know, like Jackie Blue from the Ozark Martin Dale Dale. I don't Dale. think I, yeah. I think that that's, that's not an old wow record. That's that should be a that's every day. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's a hit record. Yeah. And, it just, guys, and it sounds good today still. And yeah. I see that's yeah. the, that's the criteria. If it sounds good today, and, and they're all compatible somehow, if there's some some kind of compatibility, then I think you can play newer stuff, but at your peril. I, I just, you know, I, every time I, I hear, I talk to somebody that wants to do something like this, myself included, I have this argument, you know, like, okay, well, how far are you going to go with it? If you go too far, then you piss off the 65 year old. If you, if you're playing Chuck Berry, Johnny be good. Yeah. That may be an anomaly because everybody knows that. And it, it, but, but does, does a 25 year old identify with that at all? Right. Right. And the answer, I mean, I have grandchildren who are now like 21 and down. Okay. One's a Marine. Um, he likes rock music. My granddaughter likes uh, hip hop and country. It's like, what? Okay. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, and, and, and so, um, you know, I, I think that we, as, as a group of people doing these sorts of things that you folks are doing, uh, I think we really have to think very hard about what we're putting on. And, and Dale, listen, you know, sometimes it's what you don't play that helps you more than what you do. Play. Absolutely. But I go back to the fact that whatever you do in any of this, you got to have that sound in your head. Right. And then everything works around it. Yes. Does, does what I'm, what I'm playing, does that match that sound in my head? Yeah. Well, uh, when you when you put the, the time machine together, it was the classic hits of the 60s. And we played a few 50s songs here and there. And we played some 70s. We went up to maybe 75 at the very end or so, 76. And that was it. And we played. Right. We, we, we were we were uh, uh, we were early classic hits. Uh, yes. Oh, that's yeah. Right. That's, yeah. That's what I called it. And I called it that because um, CBS was the oldest station. Yeah, so I, right. I really didn't want to call us oldies, so I just called. We it never said the word. We never said the word oldies. Nope, yeah. I never heard that. Not no. really. No. What I think no. what I'm taking from the two of you um, is something that I've always thought the same way. In in that, and in my mind, it's not so much the year as it is what Dale said. Does it sound right? Does it fit right. what you're doing right. overall? Right. Because there are some artists that get played today, not not so many this year, but maybe in two or three years old, one or two artists, one or two songs that have a retro feel to it that you could slide in 
and actually kind of make it. I, I have a not Bruno Mars. There was somebody that, that that I was listening to today, and I thought, wow. I I agree with you, Big J, on on the one thing. You have to be very careful. And part of my right. culling the library is to get rid of some of this stuff that just doesn't fit. Right. It just doesn't fit. And I agree. I'm with in the process, the beginning process of now that I have everything pretty much on here and I'm still installing a few more tunes. Um, and I'm talking, you know, I've got a thousand sixty songs. I've got a thousand seventy songs. I'm not going to play them all. Uh, it would be stupid to do that, but I will bring them back. I will rest them and bring them in. And, and that's, that's, that's something that uh, you know, will work. And, and look, this is a labor of love. I'd like to make money doing it if I could. Um, but I have other ways that I can, I think, monetize not just this, but other other things. You know, Dale and I had a conversation and I, this is sort of it was between us, but I had tried to think about doing a new time machine. And initially, I, you know, it was it was very compelling for me to want to do that because I can do it with my eyes closed. And Paul, you know, Paul DeMarco, you know, you, you've been doing that sort of thing for a while. Um, and um, it, 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 I have a feeling that my radio friends will say, well, why aren't you doing the time machine, you dope? Uh, the more I thought about it, it was like, well, you know, everybody else is doing a time machine. And, you know, there are people on the internet who are playing air checks of the original thing. I don't know that it would be serving anybody by me doing it again. Now, I don't know. I, I could be totally wrong. And maybe I am barking up the wrong tree. Dale, I, 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 I give it to you again. I don't you know. Needed, I, what, what, I, I what I told you at that time was you needed to set up your own identity. Yeah. You, knew, you yeah. Needed, needed to put your own stamp on whatever you were doing. Right. You know, why, why do that? Why not, you know, build it around big J and, and the record pig and, and all yes. of that. Yes. And, and so that's what I decided to do now. Um, you know, I, I, I thought this discussion was going to be mostly about the time machine, if you will. Um, I'm glad we're having this discussion about the other things too, because it's so crucial to the future of our medium. And, and, you know, now they're talking, I don't know if you guys read Radio World, it's an engineering magazine, but oh, yeah. now they're talking about possibly putting AM and FM stations on the new TV system that's out there that will be able to put like many, many stations on their subcarriers mm -hmm. on this new brand new, what's it called? 5.0 something. I don't even know. I don't even know. ATMC Technically 5.0. And there's an article just this yeah. week about that. I yeah. saw it. I saw it. And, and, and I think think that man you know then then we're talking if everybody is on the dashboard and if everybody has an equal footing am radio as we know it yeah. can just disappear and just be radio and just be whatever you want to call it and i think that is where this is all going to go it's 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 almost it almost has to and if it doesn't I just see many AM operators just throwing in the towel and se selling the, the land and, and getting rid of their array. And, you know, there'll be 50 houses on that lot. I, I don't know. Huh. I, I'm so much more to run an AM station than an FM anyway. The well, yeah. Voldy electricity costs alone are prohibited. Yeah. 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 And all the yeah. copper and all the, yeah, oh, all the yeah. radials and the, the, yeah. The, oh, yeah. No, I, agree. I love, there's nothing, you know, I still love sitting in my car at night. Me too. And picking up AM stations from yep. thousands of miles away, which Me is too. easy out here in Hawaii because we oh, yeah. have water. Yeah. <laughs> you I want to take a tape. moment, and I don't want to, and I certainly don't want to chop anybody off, but uh, Daniel is one of our members. He's our weekend morning guy. And he popped in, and I want to acknowledge Daniel. Welcome in. I, I'm sorry we didn't get to you, but pop in, say hello, and a little bit about hey, yourself. Gentlemen, it's. Uh... As Mike Myers would say, I'm not worthy. Uh, oh, no, that's okay. I am. I'm just listening to this. I'm drinking your your words, and it's an honor to be here with you. Thank you. It's very hard to hear you. It is. You should be drinking a beer. I yes, should be a beer. <laughs> uh, but, but, Canadian beer. 
But I heard <laughs> yes. him fine. Of course, I've got these cost headphones on. Yeah. I can hear everything. You know, they weigh 800 <laughs> pounds. On this. You know, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, thank you for, for having me. I'm, I'm from Canada and I'm just listening to all of you. And it's a, it's a pleasure to be among you. Do you know how many calls I used to get from Canada every night on 66 WNBC? Do you realize, Big J, how how strong the signal from WNBC would come in here to Canada? I'm in Sherbrooke, Quebec, just across the border from Vermont. I used to get calls there from, NBC, from there all the time. Uh, WPTR, WKBW, these are all signals that I could oh, pick yeah. up. And they were, I swear, they were stronger than the local station in Sherbrooke. That wasn't hard at night. <laughs> no. <laughs> no one of my favorite stations to listen to at night uh from massachusetts was whoa whoa wwo in fort wayne indiana indiana the 90. yeah yep. the same jingles as yep. nbc i think too. that's right that was a great station back then say hi cagney say hello hey, that's, that's cagney oh cagney's running yeah. off now, amazingly other stations that would come in quite clearly Little Rock, Arkansas would come in really well, and WCFL would come in like clear as night, clear as day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, sure. WLS came in really good here in the Hudson Valley where I live. Every night you would, um, they were in a different time zone by about an hour, I think. Oh, yeah. And as the sun came down here, we'd start to hear them. And because of the hour difference, you'd actually hear their Skyview traffic reports. So, I mean, wow. we, were, we were getting them, you know, 5 o'clock, 5.30 at night here. Yeah. Wow. That's true. Yeah. Really, really well, too, um, which I wanted to let you NBCers know, you and Dale also, long before there was the time machine or any of those things. This goes back to when I was a young teenager. Um, you were talking about signal strength. WNBC came in Rhode Island where we stayed on vacation out at Mesquamacate Beach. So good that the stores, the beach stores had it on. And it sounded, I swear to God, Jay, it sounded like FM. It was so yeah. clear. Well, that was, you know, we had, and Dale can second this, we had some great engineers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and we were blessed with that big flamethrower, but we had great technical people that were running that thing. And Well, people man, already mentioned Gary Blau, you know, with his yeah. air checks. And Gary was just a great transmitter engineer. He passed away not that long ago, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Just yeah. before he did, he posted a bunch of them in wideband stereo yes. on one of the sites, and I downloaded them, and I'm like, I, I never had a stereo AM to hear them, to, but to appreciate how good it sounded on FM if we had had that technology is just yeah. amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, and, you know, and, that, and that was part of the secret, I think, mm -hmm. of why the, the time machine particularly sounded so damn good. Yeah. Um, in addition to the big, big plate reverb that we had, right, Dale? <laughs> yeah, I remember when we took that thing out to the transmitter. It was in the I remember that day, too. <laughs> Rock. Oh, man. You know, that cost... You guys weren't running CDs back then, were you? No. No. We, probably, right? Rarely. Everything well, was on I a did, cart, but I it was did, all Dolby. Dale told, me, Dale told me to stop playing CDs because the mixes weren't good. Gotcha. I well, remember we, you yeah, specifically The early ones were horrible. Oh, Leslie early. Gore, the Leslie Gore Greatest Hits album. I played a track from it, and you said, "Don't play that anymore." <laughs> <laughs> it was all yeah, cart, all sorry. of the uh, all of the 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 music was on cart. Yeah, and it was all uh, we we had the Dolby system for the the cart recorders and cart playback. So yeah. it was like next to no noise. Oh, I know. And each pot on the McCurdy board had its own processing. Every pot had its own oh, processing. Wow. I want to take, let's actually go back to the genesis of this. What got you guys thinking, Dale and, and Jay? What was the start of the time machine? Think back. When did it actually start? Early 86 or was it? the? It was in 87. 87. 87. Okay. We, we uh, had, uh, we had not renewed uh, Joey's contract for afternoons. Uh, and we decided we were going to put Alan Combs into the afternoon show. Alan was uh, working overnights at the time. And uh, in fact, Alan had replaced Wolfman and Wolfman's graffiti gold. Um, but um, 
I was talking with uh, John Hayes, the general manager, and we were trying to figure out what to do overnight. And we knew we had, we had uh, another year left on Jay's contract. So we figured, well, let's go ahead and put Jay in overnights and we'll have him play oldies. And then we got to thinking a little bit more, well, let's, let's kind of, uh, you know, jazz this up, make it a little different. And I had wanted to do basically the, the time machine thing for years. Um, I guess it was 10 years earlier <clears throat> when I was working at WGH, we had uh, what was called a thing of the past weekend where we, um, uh, we brought back a lot of the old jocks that we brought back all the, all the old Pam's jingles, WGH had all of them. And uh, we did a weekend of oldies and <clears throat> I did a couple of shifts that weekend and I did it basically the way I wanted to do an oldie station. And a few years later, I had moved WTAR there in Norfolk over to oldies. And I was just starting to, <clears throat> I was about to order a package from one of the Pam's incarnations. Um, well, I guess it was CPMG. I think at the time I was going to, and, and I got the job at NBC and that you know, put that on the back burner. But then when, uh, when we decided to do the time machine thing and the time machine name came from John Hayes, he said, what can we call this? You know, they, they was, we were kicking around time tunnel. He said, how about time machine? I said, that sounds great. So he said, do it. And so I went out and I ordered the jingles from uh, CPMG and uh, caught a lot of flack from some of the people that said they they actually had the uh, the rights to them and uh, had to have the NBC attorneys in on it. And, uh, but we ordered, I had, uh, what did I, have? I think that year I had like about a, a $20,000 jingle budget. So um, I had maybe 15,000 left over cause I'd ordered some other things and, uh, and ordered these and we ordered it in two, two segments and we put it on and <laughs> Um, it was interesting the, the chime jingle uh, that was just like the WABC chime uh, we didn't have on originally. And um, one day uh, Dan Taylor came in and said, Hey, uh, I got this in the mail. And it was the chime chime jingle perfectly sung with the original chime. And he said, I can't tell you where I got this because there was all the litigation going on right now with Pam's. And uh, he said, but let's just put it on. So we did. And that's where we got the chime from. Well, where did, where did the NBC logo come from? How did it that was happen? sung. It was all sung by a jingle company oh, oh. that did not want to be identified. And you do realize that that jingle was the end, the actual end piece of one jingle, uh, which you oh yeah, you it, was, it was yeah. What what was that series thirty? I guess uh, it was the weather jingle. Yeah, it's the uh, weather, the weather is in, in my WABC. You know, yeah. yeah. And, and there was a little, there was a little <laughs> under it. There uh, were two French, there were French horns underneath it. Yeah, and, and there's uh, some kind of there's something else there too. I'm not quite clear what it was, and the chime is in the key of it's it's a C note. The, well, the, the chime, yes. you can't find that chime anywhere, that exact anywhere. chime. Oh, I, it doesn't no. show up on any sound effects album. No, nope, nope. it is. Uh, it, I don't know where. Rick Sklar brought it with him. I, I think um, when he came over to WABC, he had it. Yeah. Um, and, and he brought it with him, and, and they that's when they used just the chime. I know. Before they put the uh, the jingle they, on it a few years exactly. later. Exactly. And, and it was genius to put them together. Because, you know, growing up at the Jersey Shore, as I did, uh, all you heard on the beach was WABC. Ping. That's all you heard. You yeah. didn't hear anything else. You didn't hear the just just jockey. You heard goes, that it, it, it comes through everything. It, it came through have, everything. I have the original yeah. wave copy yeah. right yeah. here. I, right. I have the original wave copy right here. Right. Can you play it? <laughs> I, well, I yeah, probably. I mean, because you know, my loin, my loins are stirring now. I mean, come on. <laughs> really? Yeah, I, I just I just sent uh, Steve all of the the wave uh, files of all of the jingles. Um, yeah, you sure did. Uh, like this one, like 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 this one. Sixty six W N B C. 
WNBC New York. Yeah, there you love it. Now that one was put together by uh, John Locke. That's a good yeah. one. Now Most that the one there, um, when I got it, there was something, now, and it was like, like this with a number of the jingles. They just didn't sound fat enough. Um, and I, I, um, I didn't like the way the fun came on at the end. So the fun on that one, in fact, uh, the fun capital of New York City. The fun capital is actually from um, the master I had of the WGH package. And then I, I edited in uh, the New York City part. And the fun on the end was from the WGH. And wow. I did that with a, nu with a number of them. Wow. And then there are other jingles where I wasn't thrilled with uh, the, the male background. And so Jim Collins and I got into the studio one night. God bless Jim Collins. Yeah. He, um, and um, I sang bass on a number of them. All just night down long. below, oh, the, wow. the bass line <laughs> under it. And, uh, and that sort of fattened it up some. Yeah. And then some of them are even, uh, we took the, we took the jingle and the bed where the, uh, where the logo goes, um, we cut that out and inserted uh, Jim synthesizer and then took the whole thing. And uh, Dan Taylor used his Sonovox and sang the Sonovox. Is that where that came from? Yeah, yeah. I wondered about that. I thought yeah. that came out of Dallas. That's great. No, yeah. no. Everything was homemade. Well you know, the funny done. thing is half of these jingles were in stereo and the other half are still in mono. Yeah, that, that's because when I did the um, uh, the WGH um, mixes, they were originally in mono. Now, some of them are WABC mixes, too, off of the WABC mixes. That's why I wondered about that. That's so here you go, all right? I don't, I don't know how game. well this is going to play over, over there, but let's try it. WABC. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you deal. see how you see how they they don't blend well. I mean, they're not even the same key, right? And right. that's why it worked because the Discord was like, ah, you know, <laughs> it reached out and grabbed you. Yeah, it did. It did. <laughs> I, it was I, a lot know. of it was a lot of fun doing all that stuff. And and also back at that time, uh, we had gone to Combo. Now, when we, uh, as far as not having engineers run uh, all of the shows. So we could sort of, we, we could con, could do anything we wanted to do in the program, in the, in the production studio, as long as we ran the completed product first on our own first. show. Right. I had to do that all the time when I added music. Yeah. So when we uh, extended the time machine to weekends, uh, at that point, uh, the engineers had just gone out on strike. Yes, I remember. So Collins and I... Uh, had to do all the recording because the, the, the new jingles came in and we had to put all that on. And, and, uh, um, uh, we even, uh, I remember went out to the transmitter one night just to make sure all of the settings were right on the, on the, uh, uh, the, the reverb and, and everything, but, but that was all perfect. Um, uh, hey everybody, and, everybody, I don't mean to be rude. I've got to jump off. I have a conference call to jump on. Okay. But again, thank you for letting me be part of this, guys. And thanks so much for sharing your story. Take care. Uh, good good to meet Take you. care, John. Thanks good for stopping in. Yeah. Bye, you John. Guys, Take care. You guys, okay. you guys are awesome. Thank you. Bye. Have a good night. John, we'll talk. To you. you too. God bless. Yep. Aloha. <laughs> <laughs> good timing on that one. Really and good and it. it has the fast decay. See, that's the key. Because a lot of stations let that thing sustain when they use that. And that's not, right. not the way to go. I've got that's the, the ABC version, and that if you let that go, it'll it'll run five seconds. Well, with the yeah. reverb, with, with reverb in the background, it will. But the actual jingle, the actual chime itself goes bang, and 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 it just goes right down. Now your reverb at WNBC was in the entire chain, including the music and commercials. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, out of the transmitter, we put it. We we put the unit. Okay. Okay, Steve. Listen, real quick. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna bolt just yet, but I do have to get ready for my show at nine o'clock. Um, if um, you guys figure out where you're gonna put me, if you're gonna put me anywhere, 
The only thing I do ask, the only thing I do ask from you, please, this time, disable all the processing on your end, because when I send you the final cut, I'm going to have it set exactly the way that I heard WNBC in my ears. And I want everybody to get the full effect or say, DeMarco, you're fired. So uh, (laughs) just just let me let me know. Let me know if that's possible to do. It is possible to do. And if I could get everybody to have the same settings, I'll just take the processing off for the entire week. Probably best we do. Yeah. You know, well, then I have a question. Do you want reverb on everything or just the mic? I would prefer on everything. everything, On everything. Yes. Just the way they did it. Yeah. Because you don't do it like CBS FM did and just put it on the mic. Yeah, no. Is that what they did? Okay. I wouldn't (laughs) know. But okay. But I do know. I do know that when we listen to commercials and the news, you could hear it on the NBC time machine during that period. I and wish I had a unit that would make me that I could that I could run everything through before it goes out. Well, you need more than one thing. <laughs> what was that? You, you, you need you need more than one unit because one unit isn't going to make it the way to make it sound the way it did. You're going to need a few things, a few boxes, if you will. <laughs> there are very few. You might be able to find one. You might even be able to do it on with software. It's possible. Well, let me ask you, Jay, oh, yeah. are you doing a voice have, track or a live show? You doing I'm live? Gonna be doing, no, mine's going to be either voice track or, or it's going to be automated. Okay, I, I, do me a favor. Send me a small clip. Send me a small clip of just something you're doing in the studio, just a dry run with nothing underneath it. Send it right. to me. I'll send it back. And you tell me if you like what I added. And if you did, I'll tell you a real easy, simple way to do it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, which, yep. which I, I'm not at that stage yet, but when I do, I right. will. It'll put the reverb, it will put the compression and everything in the chain itself. So when yeah. you upload it over to Steve, it will sound just like NBC. That's that's what I'm going to have to do. But that's why I told worst, him I don't want any processing on his end. It'll kill it after that. Yeah, we don't want. And that. worst case scenario, I have I have all my audio chain here with the reverb, everything. If someone wants to send me a show dry. Uh, I can I can run it through as if it were on the air and then send it to Steve uh, exactly the way my show sounds. So uh, Steve, um, Steve knows what mine sounds like. It's you know, it's I've, I've got it. You it's know, I right, did this for yeah. years engineering, so I've got it down pretty well. Uh, in fact, I just ordered a new uh, audio processor uh, today from Wheatstone. Um, <clears throat> I spent an awful lot of money. Um, but, but I, I'm using the Aphex, uh, right now and, um, it's, it's set up very, you know, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty good. So, uh, I don't know how the new box set up for the, for the show, but I might, um, but we'll see. Yeah. Good luck with that, Bob. Good luck. Yeah. Thanks. I've got a big relationship with stereo tool now, and I wasn't even into digital processing, but the day somebody said, just try the demo. And I never took my fingers off of it. Here it is like a year and a half, two years. And that's all we run here at Totally 70s. So that's that what I run on mine too. Stereo yeah, tool. I love it. Yeah. I love everything about it. Yeah. So uh, somebody mentioned uh, voice tracking. Uh, you know, I, I can do voice tracking. If, so can if, I. If I do that. How do we do that? Yeah, I can do it. Do you have, that's crazy. Do you have, we use um, station playlist here. And I have yeah. the purchased version. Um, you can download the remote VT. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Um, yeah. The thing is, I only have licensed five accounts. You, you guys can all use my account. That's fine. I don't use it to track with because I have the original thing right here. Um, as can't far you as just get them on else? Can't, can't you get the voice? Can't you get it on? Uh... Dropbox or, or what's the other one? Uh, we transfer. To, I believe that you have to get from stationplaylist.com, but it's a free download. It's just oh. it, for voice talent, it's free. My end, I have to put the format in exactly right down to the element, which I'm I've actually written out on paper. I've got a, all the jingle cuts. The problem is that they're all numbered one, a, you know, one cut one. I have no idea outside of three or four that I renamed for my own knowledge, 
which one is what and what you guys would prefer. On those jingles, I think most of the ones that are uh, just uh, like uh, cut one yeah. are the Pam's Reesings and there's some um, some sweepers and things like that. If it has one A, mm -hmm. that's usually the stuff that was bought in the 70s by John Lund, the Pam stuff. Okay. So uh, you, somebody played the Sunday in New York jingle. That's one of those from uh, from the 70s. We have the Dan Taylor one in this in this group. I've got I've Dan got Taylor should be in there. Yeah, the Dan Taylor sweepers okay. are in there. I don't yeah, have, I have those two. You yeah. guys, though. I got to look. I, I haven't looked at all the files that I got. I got to look at those. And there's a clock in there somewhere, too. I just got to I got to look at the clock and make sure I understand it. And by the way, we're, we're doing news, right? And when is I'm going to do news, I, I'll, I'll be love. I'd love it if one of you would join me. I'll write it. Because I did news for I did network news for five years. Um, yeah, I'm going to do news right now, um, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Friday and Saturday, and may, maybe so. I think that there may be off drive times. I may not, and I may just run something else in place of it, only because what, I want it to be fresh. I don't want to recycle anything. If Some I of the could, one of the I cuts could. in there is the news intro. This uh, is with, uh, news with Fred from Casey. Yeah. I'm going to use that one. Correct. Yeah. That it was going to run at 57. Now, how did you guys okay. do it? Now, I'm going by memory. You ran the news before the top of the hour, except no, it, it ran at the top on this. It ran. No, no. The, the time machine the top. was top of the hour. Top, top of the of hour. hour. Sure. That okay. I did anyway on my shift. And, 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 some of it was NBC what, Radio Network at night, wasn't it? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I thought what so. we okay. did, and what we did is, I would have it potted down, uh, have the network potted down, and I would start the 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 ID right at the top of the hour every hour, smack that thing every time, and the the announcer would pause briefly. And then yeah, say, the I'm Dan Alexander. And I would, it would go W, you know, this is news from 66 WNBC, WNBC New, York. New York. Right. And then New York. Yeah, right. And then, and then, and I'm, I'm Dan Alexander. You know, it, it would be Don Alexander. And it was 99.9% .9 of the time it worked perfectly. Right on. Mm -hmm. So here's the question for you, Steve. Are you going to, are we going to do this at right at the top of the hour then, or are you going to do it at 57? And the reason I'm asking, so when these files are produced, um, we produce a 57 minute file roughly. Um, and then I want to make sure that everything is going to fall into place. Or are you actually going to send me the actual news file and I can just, I can make everything happen right away. So that like that, let's say that Saturday morning, you do a couple of newscasts. And you just send them to me and they're completely embedded uh, in the show and everything will be as, as tight as you can imagine. I won't go there, but, you know, so seriously. Um, the idea that I had was I was going to do the news and, you know, a brief like <clears throat> two quick scores throw the, at the tail end of the news and a quick New York weather. I was going to do them every hour i'll have them in automation ready for when station playlist grabs it a quarter of everything would be ready by 20 of in the can and then you guys I, i've told everybody that i've talked to start your show with music because i'll do the new sports weather <clears throat> it'll go into that little top of the hour that's like a promo that i had Dale, that you did for us, that was great. And then it'll go into that sixty-six W ending BC, and then bam! I want you guys to start your show right into music, right there. Are we okay. using Dale's time clock? Because I have it here. <laughs> oh, that's good. To the Why, yeah, what's so funny for fans? Awesome. What can we say? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we want to be. Use, can I use this the whole idea? Yeah. Can we have a simpler version that, that, that doesn't have the actual NBC, NBC elements, but more tailored towards us? Why? We want to be more tailored toward them. No, there, there's, it seems to me there's stuff in here that really doesn't apply. Like requests and things like that. You're, yeah, you're saying? that's true. We don't have we don't have requests. Um, 
we could draw a line through it. <laughs> you can, know, I it if, can I do it if it works, though? If I can get somebody to come in to, I mean, oh, we, God, okay yes. with that. Oh, yeah. yes. no. Okay. May I, may I interrupt about, about one thing? Yes. Um, Dale gave me the liberty of tweaking it a little bit myself by, I, I, I played you know, the songs he wanted me to, but I played them somewhat in a different order sometimes because what I would do is I would weave the show. It was like a, it was like a painting where I matched the era jingle with the era song. Oh, sure. Of course. And I did that. Well, yeah. That, every and, and everybody, single... everybody had that, that ability. Uh, the yeah. clock was a guideline. Yes. Um, you know, and, and that's the way, that's the way you have to run it. The, the only the only absolutes in there were the top of the hour. Yeah. Um, and uh, the two, the two requests were absolutes. Um, yeah. And we had to have a certain number of spot sets, uh, mm -hmm. but all of that stuff in between, you know, was, was basically how you, how the performer put the show together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which, which was, I spent, I mean, my mind was racing for five and a half hours every weeknight, except Saturday morning, which was six hours. And, um, I you know, I, I had to see. I miss every morning. J J yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh huh. Uh, <laughs> hey. but, uh, I, yeah. I've got run tape and lose a hundred pounds. You fat fuck. Yeah, really. All right. Thank you. Thank I you. I got to get out of here in just a second because I've got to get to the post office before they close. Okay. All right. Uh, and well, and again, bank, I do too. I have to. Is only open for an hour and a half. Okay. So uh, now, uh, let me let me just get uh, now for. Um, for the the voice tracks, the, the the guy us guys the voice track, are you going to have the uh, the uh, hour already constructed, and then we put our inserts in? Is that yes? Is that what and you'll have about? the ability within this software to talk over the ends of jingles and the beginning of the next element, and as far as that goes, I will put a voice track marker in just about every in between every spot. You can ignore it and it'll just sag, or you can track and you can talk all over everything the way you did on NBC. Well, okay. wait, um, wait a minute. Wait, are, are you asking, it's Dale doing this for you guys? I mean, is he, no, is I'm Gene, doing this. Oh, no, no. I'm going to, I'm going to do a show. Oh, you didn't know. I'm glad we could break that. <laughs> news for you. 66 WNBC.